During the night, Littlefoot comes up with a plan to help his friends. In the old shack, within their pen, it takes Sarah, Littlefoot, Victor, and Ducky a second to realize that there are other dinosaurs in there with them. They are much larger than Littlefoot and his friends. They have duck bills and a huge circular crest on the top of their heads. Not only do they have a putrid odor, but they also look very submissive and terrified. Hey, maybe we can ask them to help us. Sure, I don't see why not. Littlefoot gallops over to the others, the dust kicking up in the dark. Hey, you guys. Um, we're trying to get out of here. Do you want to help us? One of the creatures stands up on his hind legs. A piece of it is hanging off. You can't. They kill you. They kill you. What do you mean? If we all band together, they can't hurt all of us. Victor rolls his eyes. Littlefoot, the whole point is some of us. They can hurt some of us. No one wants to go out there knowing it could be them. But Victor, we'll stay in here forever. Look up there. Littlefoot turns his neck around and points with his tail to an area in the shack that the moonlight is shining through. If we can make that hole bigger, we can escape through there. No one's going to be expecting us to go through that area. Littlefoot, as much as I want to escape, Sarah says, looking at the hole herself. That hole is way too small, and the noise it's going to make, it's going to attract a whole bunch of people. That's ridiculous. Sarah, look, it's really dark out now, and they're probably sleeping. You don't think they have guards? Nuh-uh. Maybe if I go through there, I can see. I think my head's small enough to fit. Ducky is crying in the corner, trying to fall asleep. Well, I guess you are right. After all, you do not have much space for a brain anyway, so maybe your head can be more pliable. Littlefoot turns to face Ducky and scowls at her. Ducky, it's very mean. Anyway, Littlefoot says, turning back to face the crested duckbills. Are you going to help us? No, says their leader. I do not want to get killed. My family was killed. My children. No. We won't get killed. They won't even see you. I said no! I <gasps> wow. Okay, then. Sarah says, licking her lips and getting to her four feet. Just so you know, whenever we do escape from here, which I fully intend to do, don't ask us for help. Littlefoot hangs his head down sadly. These crested duckbills are basically grown-ups. And usually grown-ups always come to their rescue. It's weird to see grown-ups debased to a level where they themselves feel helpless and won't even try to help the kids. I guess it's just us, Sarah. We should still help them if we can try. I think they're just scared. Well, they can't be that scared if they're not willing to get out of here. Hmm. Littlefoot climbs out of the pen and looks around, or at least feels around, since it's very dark. Hmm. Can I help you, Littlefoot? Sure, Ducky. I'm looking for something to stand on. I don't know if I can reach up there. It's pretty high. But maybe if we stack things, we can do it. Are you okay, Ducky? Yeah. Littlefoot tries to see Ducky, but it's so hard to see in here. The only parts that are illuminated are where the little holes and slits of light are shining through where the door is not closed all the way. Hey, Littlefoot. Yeah? Maybe we can blast through the door. I can do it. Sarah, I would not. No one asked you, Victor. You're just like the others. Oh my god. Are you aware that if you do something stupid, the rest of us get shot? Are you more scared about being shot? Or are you more scared about being tortured? I would rather get shot than tortured. At least then there's a chance we could get away. Sarah starts pawing the ground and licks her lips, ready to charge through the door. Wilford gallops and quickly lands in front of her. Don't, Sarah. It'll make too much noise. Really? And peeling back the roof won't? Guys, if we are going to do something, we have to hurry. There's not a lot of time. Sure there is. I found something. What'd you find, Ducky? Uh, can you help me pull it? Yeah. Victor, are you going to help or not? No, I'm not. Sorry. You're seriously just going to sit here and let them enslave us? We're already enslaved, Sarah. I mean, not like you care about my idea. You always were a coward. Yeah, at least I'm alive. Oh, please. I will not shed a tear for you if you guys get caught and beaten to death. 
If we're slaves, we're more valuable to them alive anyway. Yeah, not if you're more trouble to them. All right, good job, Ducky. You know what? Now, I guess we climb. Uh, me first. <laughs> Littlefoot climbs on top of the two crates. The chest that Ducky pulled over and he helped her pull over was much larger. Littlefoot put the crate on top of that huge chest. After he stands on it and Ducky stands on him, trying her best to balance on his small head, they still can't reach. What is wrong with you? Can you stop making those noises? Victor, I am trying to save us, and all you care about is looking cool. I can't reach. Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, Ducky, it really sounds awkward, though. What do you mean? I mean, never mind. Ducky gives up, trying to stretch, and straddles Littlefoot's back. I cannot reach Littlefoot. I really tried it. I'm sorry. Maybe we need something else to stand on. From what it seems like, there's like a good 15 feet left. If we got those bozos to help us, then maybe we could do it. I'll ask them again. Maybe if we offer them something, they'll help. Like what? We do not have any money. My daddy does, but he's not here. I'm sure they're hungry. Maybe if we get them something to eat. Where are we going to get food, little foot? You going to take off a chunk from your tail? Mm, you have a good point. Hey, maybe I'll tell them about the Great Valley, and then they'll have a home there. Oh, I'm pretty sure they had a home before they got here. Come on, let's keep trying. Maybe if you stand on me. Okay. They try again, but this time, Sarah is at the base. Littlefoot stands on her, trying his best to balance, and Ducky tries again, but they are still too short. Sarah, tippy toe all the way! I am! Anymore, I'm gonna break my freaking feet! <laughs> Victor is looking at them, and then a shadow catches his eye, passing by the light being emitted through the slit in the door. His eyes widen, and his jaw becomes slack. Guys, guys, get back in the pen now. Hurry up! Are we close or not? No, it's not gonna work. Guys, get back in the pen! What? Why? We gotta try something else. Hurry the fuck up! Littlefoot and his friends can hear the chains rattling. Quickly, they all scramble, falling on top of each other. Ducky hurries, slipping in the sand, and manages to get back in. Littlefoot and Sarah are scrambling over themselves. The chest falls over and makes a noise. Sarah accidentally rolls onto her back and scrambles trying to get up, but she's slipping and sliding over Littlefoot, the both of them feeling as though they want to piss themselves because their legs can't move fast enough. The chain is unraveled, and two men walk in. They light a cigarette, and then all of a sudden, a torch manifests and lights up another torch that had been hanging on the wall. Littlefoot and his friends thought it was the two men from earlier, but no, it was completely different people. One of them being Heath, the guy that had been on the horse that stopped something horrible from happening to Sarah. Hey, it's that guy, the nice one. None of them are nice, little foot. Get that in your head. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? He says. You guys finding everything okay? Are we finding everything okay? Are you serious? Look where we look at us, you freaking two-faced butthead. Sarah, that's not nice. Buttheads are stinky people. Yeah, like you. What? Why are you even... Don't talk to me. You tricked us. You made it seem like you were going to help us. Keep your voice down. The other guy that was Heath smiles. Gonna make her talk to you like that? Pick up those bags for me. Carry them outside. You got it. Heath is left alone, smoking his cigar. He looks at the friends, the firelight dancing on his face. For some reason, even though it's a darker ambience here, all the friends can see Heath a bit more clearly, now that they're basically under him. He's wearing a western cowboy hat, and it seems as though his hair is a blonde or dirty blonde, hanging down to the length of his shoulders. He has a rugged, handsome look, and what frightens Sarah is that she can't tell what he's thinking. The guy exhales smoke from his cigar and then looks back as he sees his partner carrying some of the bags outside. I know things look really bad right now, but I swear to God I'm trying to help you. How are you trying to help us? By capturing us? If I hadn't found you and played along, worse would have happened to you by now. The fact that you're here and I'm here, well, that means a lot. I guarantee you guys are going to make it home. 
What do you mean? Are you a friend? Are you trying to help us? Bullshit. Victor says, looking off to the corner, where the other crested duckbills are cowering. That was the case you would have helped us escape. I don't know where you guys all came from or how you were able to even stay alive this long without being captured, but I can tell you right now, within many, many kilometers, there ain't nobody's gonna help you. Now, I understand the predicament that you're in, but if I'm gonna help you, y'all gonna have to listen to me. I really, really, really want to help you. Why? What's in it for you? Don't think it's right owning other creatures that can talk and think for themselves is all. Wait, so if we couldn't talk, you would still keep us as slaves? Ducky, I think what he's trying to say is that he wants to help us, and he really is our friend, but he has to pretend he's not, see? No, I don't understand that at all. Because right now, to me, it just seems like you're playing good cop, but I could be wrong. Well, I guess you're just going to have to trust me, ain't you? Says Heath, looking at Victor, tipping his hat. Sarah steps closer to the pen and looks at Heath. Say you did want to help us, and we did believe that story, which it's just BS to me. How would you do it? Heath butts the ash from his cigar. He leans against the wooden poles of the pen that they're in looking from left to right in the dark as if some imaginary person could be watching in on their conversation. He then looks back to the outside of the shack where his friend is still packing the stuff. Without looking at Sarah in the direction of his friend, he quietly says, I'd have to get you all sold first. Get us sold? Y'all are gonna be bought. I can't, I can't protect you against that. But what I can make sure of is that you're bought by somebody who's proper, who won't hurt y'all none. You're, you're, so wait, we're gonna get bought as slaves? Yes. After you're bought by the right person, then we can go from there to get you guys freed. Then of itself is a feat, because you can't just be free, you'll just be recalled again. You'd have to get a train all the way up to the northern regions. Um, I know this is gonna sound weird, Heath, but... I don't... Do you know a place called the Great Valley? Alright, I'm done. Are we going or what? Says Heath's partner. Yeah, I'm coming. Stay low. Don't fight them. Whatever you do, don't fight them and definitely don't try to escape. I cannot protect you if you run out on your own. You understand? Sarah and the others are silent. Sarah has a million miles per hour thoughts. She doesn't know whether or not to trust Heath and everything inside her is screaming to not trust him, but the desperation for wanting to be free overtakes her. Thanks, Heath. We really appreciate everything you're doing, says Littlefoot, wagging his tail like a dog. He tips his hat, outs his cigar, and lights another one. He exits the shack, walking slowly, and then turns around back to face them. Then he grabs onto the two barn doors of the shack, dramatically as he puffs out his cigar, closing them and cutting off the little bit of light that they had. Their group of friends, forlornly, listen as the chains are being wrapped against the door. Everything falls into darkness and silence once more. This is good news, you guys. He's gonna help us. Victor scoffs. What is the matter, Victor? Do not you think he is a good guy? In every movie, there's always a good guy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what is it? We're not getting out of here unless we get out of here, and we can't depend on that guy for it to happen. So I'd get really comfortable. Well, let's give him a chance. I don't think he'd do all of that just to lie to us. Sarah closes her eyes and sleeps in the corner, crying so her friends can't hear or see her. She doesn't know what to do. It's not like she has a choice. As the morning comes, the shack is opened unceremoniously. Sarah and her friends are woken up to a blinding light and a loud metal noise as the barn doors fly open. Sarah and her friends are dragged out along with some of the crested duckbills. Once again, they are set before an audience. Heath is there in the corner. Sarah had seen him talking to the guy who had lifted up her tail yesterday. Over the next five days, Sarah, Littlefoot, Victor, and Ducky are given different jobs to do. 
until finally, at the end of the week, they are purchased. The owner is a strange woman and her husband who walk over to a pen that the friends are put in. Oh, these are exotic. Oh, Alan, aren't they exotic? Look at how pretty they are. Hmm, I've seen better. Uh, look at that little apricot one. Oh, I just love to snuggle with her. I wonder if they can cook. They're beasts, honey. Yes, but they're intelligent beasts. You teach them how to do anything, you got a slave for life. Sarah glares at this human woman. Oh, I wish we could take them home now. No, we got a lot of stuff we got to prepare for before we can take them home, honey. Come on, let's go back to the carriage. Oh, I can't. I just look at that one. More. Look at that cute little pink one. Oh, she'd be so good for Daniel. Hi. We're going to be your new masters. Sarah wants so badly to spit in her face, but she knows that, that will cause a negative reaction. And it most likely would ruin their chances of them getting out. Honey, come on. We can't take them home now. Oh, I know. I know, Ellen. Oh, I'm so happy. Are you happy? I'm very happy. This is a beautiful birthday present. Thank you so much. All right now, Eugene. Thank you so much. Oh, it's been my pleasure doing business with you, Wendy. Thanks, Al. I'll see you all bright and early tomorrow. Will do. Sarah and the others watch as this woman and her husband board their horse and carriage and take off. This is the last day they have. Sarah looks into the sky and she can see that sun the very familiar sun, symbolic image of what caused them to appear in this place in the first place. Sarah then thinks quickly, blinking very fast. She treaches through the mud to the other side to where her friends are all lying down. Ducky has been taciturn of late. Ducky? Ducky, are you okay? She's not doing so good, Sarah. She feels like she's a fever. <sighs> Littlefoot? Yeah? Can I talk to you for a second? What's going on? I mean, I'd rather you stay here with Ducky. Really? I mean, call me crazy. Now is not the time to split up and hide things from each other. Don't worry, I'll tell you. Just, can you just relax? Sarah says, looking back at her cousin, giving him the look. Victor rolls his eyes and continues looking out into space. Littlefoot walks along Sarah, the mud oozing through his toes. It's a very squishy and uncomfortable feeling. When Sarah comes to a halt, she looks behind her to make sure that Victor and Ducky are out of earshot. Ducky, her poor friend, is still lying down like a sphinx or a cat with her legs folded under her body, appearing to be shell-shocked. Sarah turns back to face Littlefoot. Hey, I'm planning on escaping tonight. Mm, tonight? Yes. But that's not what he said to do. He says that we're supposed to wait. Littlefoot, listen to me. What? He <sighs> is one of them. He's tricking us to get us to be docile or whatever it is he's trying to do. He is not our friend. And there are more humans than there are of him. Even if he meant well, do you think if the other humans really wanted us, that he'd be able to stop them? I mean, I, I guess, I guess not. Exactly. If we want to get out of here, we're gonna have to do it ourselves. Are you with me or not? I, um... Victor is out of it, and so is Ducky. I need you to be on board. Littlefoot looks around. It's quite unnerving to witness as humans saddle up the scared crested duckbells and ride them, forcing them to do painful stunts. Littlefoot feels as though that will be his friends. I'm on board, Sarah. But what's the plan? Sarah walks to the other edge of the pen. She looks at some humans that are spitting on the ground and looking back up at them as though they want to eat them. For humans, creatures that are so significantly smaller than any other creature that Sarah knows, they are so much more terrifying than the largest sharp tooth she's ever seen. I can't explain how we're in the situation, but remember what happened with the sons? Oh yeah, the baby son! Yeah. Maybe if we find the baby son again, we can go back home. <gasps> Maybe the baby son took us here. Littlefoot, concentrate. Sorry. I don't, I'm not saying you're wrong. But if we can run back to the area where we were and then try to go back in the direction, maybe that will give us clues as to where to go to go home. But Sarah, Littlefoot says as he stops walking. Sarah stops walking too to look at him. We don't remember where that is. When we were putting the carriage, we couldn't see. We pretty much went in a straight line. At least I think so. I remember, because that's how the carriage was parked. 
okay. Um, I think it's a good idea. Let's go back and tell the others. Wait. We can't let Heath know. You understand? You can't tell any of the humans. You're right. Okay. Sarah waits for there to be more activity with humans coming in and participating in auctions where they're buying all sorts of creatures. A new carriage had come in, filled with all new dinosaurs. Ones that Sarah could have sworn she saw looked familiar. Okay, well, they're distracted. Victor, Ducky, let's go. What? What are you doing? Come on, wake up. I'm not sleeping. What is? What are you doing? Listen to me, Sarah says, putting her forelegs on his shoulders. We don't have a lot of time. We have a small space of time, a very small window to do this. So let's go. I'm not getting shot at. Victor, I want to go home. Exactly. You can stay here if you want, but I'm leaving. Don't worry. Push comes to shove. I'll send people back for you. Wait, do you guys even have a plan? Yes, we're doing it. Let's go. And with that, Sarah quickly follows Littlefoot, jumping over the wooden fence. Ducky hopping on Victor's back and following them. The four of them galloping away as fast as their legs can take them, straight for the brush. Littlefoot looks up as he is running his full speed and notices the sun is very bright in the sky. As he is running, he looks to Sarah, who is behind him, and asks, Sarah, which way? Just keep following me. Hurry. Sarah, what if they catch us? We don't let him. The friends are making so much noise that for a moment, as Sarah goes down an incline, she slips and falls and crashes into more thick foliage that sounds as though a large three-horn had just jumped into a pile of crumpling papers. After the noise dies down, before they start running, Sarah stops them. Is anyone following us? I don't know, but come over here to this next bush. Sarah, Victor, Littlefoot, and Ducky walk over to the bush adjacent from the one that they landed in. Ow! These ones are spiky! Shush! Sarah looks up at the steep incline, praying to every god in existence that they're not being followed. I think... I think we lost them. Maybe. But now we're gonna have to be more careful. If we go crashing through the trees, they're gonna hear us. This is a horrible idea. Had any more bright ideas before we got sold off to those crackheads? Come on. They quietly walk in the direction that Sarah is going, just hoping that she knows the way. Littlefoot starts to feel hopeful, and as five minutes go by, they start to lift their tails exuberantly, thinking they've gotten away. Sarah, we did it. I don't think they're following us. I don't even think they're, that they think we're gone. This was a great idea. Maybe. Which way now? Well, the main trail is there. We can't bear off too much from it. Over there is a cliff. We're gonna have to sort of kind of get back on the main road. On the dirt road where all those carriages go? Yes, Ducky. We have no choice. At least for a little while. See? That part goes over a canyon. <laughs> You're freaking insane. We're gonna be sitting ducks out there. I know, that's why we have to make sure no one's coming. Sarah's plan works as they walk over the trail, which functions as a rocky bridge over the canyon, a drop that could definitely spell their death. They get to the other side and go back into the thick wooded foliage. Sarah breathes a sigh of relief after being quiet for about two minutes. Victor looks back, his blue eyes darting to and fro, and then lands on Sarah. Well? I think we made it. Now all we gotta do is get to that spot where we were. Where is that? Which tree from here? Just follow the road. As they are walking through the vegetation, Ducky hears something. She looks back, behind her. All she can see is a trail of leaves that they overturned, and Victor's brown tail swaying to and fro. Hmm. You okay up there? You're pretty heavy, you know. I am not that heavy. Jeez, maybe you're just weak. Would you both shut it? I heard something. Like what, Ducky? I do not know. It just sounded strange. Sarah looks back, followed by Victor and Littlefoot. They stop and listen. Nobody hears anything except for the leaves swaying in whatever little wind there is. Let's keep going. I think we're fine. Come on. But Ducky can't shake the feeling that they're being followed. There's that noise again. This time, all of them hear it. What is that? I heard it too. 
It sounds like someone's running through the trees. Is it human? It sounds too fast. I wouldn't worry about it. It's probably some creature or something. After all, nothing out here can be worse than those humans. <gasps> A primal fear overcomes the group of friends as they stare in the direction where they hear the noise. And then, all at once, from seemingly every direction, the noise duplicates and is emitted from unknown sources. None of the friends know what this is, but they all are on edge. This certainly feels wrong. All of them have one thing on their mind. Run. But they have no idea where to, being totally overcome with terror that if they take a step, they're going to run into the very thing that they're trying to escape. Sarah looks ahead of her and sees an eerie apparition emerging from out of the foliage. The first thing she sees is its long muzzle, the jaw starting to open to reveal double rows of sharp teeth followed by its narrow body, packed tightly with lean muscle, and then its very slender legs, followed by its uncurling feet and toes, one of which is equipped with a half-moon-shaped claw. Sarah's mouth falls open in horror. The others aren't looking in her direction subconsciously. She wonders why. She doesn't wonder for long, because from out of the left and right emerges two other creatures like the one in front of Sarah. The triage of Dakota Raptors have been following the friends ever since their escape. Sarah can see a strange spiky collar or harness attached to each of these creatures. RUN! Sarah quickly screams out and reacts in under a second. As Victor quickly lunges forward, Ducky is momentarily put off balance and manages to hold on to the tip of his tail before falling completely off of him. Ducky, hold on! Ducky screams in fear, her smaller body flailing behind Victor as she manages to grab on once more just in the nick of time. The Dakota Raptors snap in the air and narrowly miss, but as they get up to speed, one of them quickly catches up to Victor. Its large, narrow head quickly swivels in Ducky's direction. In under a second, the creature opens its jaws and slams him down onto Ducky. She screams in agony and fear as she feels the pressure of its jaws clamped around her ribcage. Despite all this, she's holding on for dear life to Victor's tail, but is quickly slipping. She starts to lose her sight and she slips and lets go. Ducky! Oh my god. Victor cries out in terror. Oh no, Ducky! Sarah! Sarah, Ducky! Look. Littlefoot is quickly slammed to the ground from the side by something large. It's one of the Dakota Raptors, who had caught up to them and somehow gotten in front. The creature hisses and runs up to Littlefoot, who cowers in a fetal position, screaming. Sarah escapes, but is cut off by another Dakota Raptor. She slides to a halt the hot, dry sand and stones burning her feet. She screams and quickly turns in the other direction, trying to get her footing on the dusty ground. The Dakota Raptor bites into her back before she can take off. Sarah screams so loudly, her own ears are ringing in pain. Reflexively, Sarah swings her head backwards and headbutts the Raptor, who quickly lets go. Ugh. Before she can go anywhere, it bites onto her tail right before she can get away, but this time lifts its right leg so it can sink its dew claw into her hips. Sarah shuts her eyes tightly and sees white. <laughs> Littlefoot, who is still curled up, is waiting to be attacked, but when nothing happens, he opens his eyes and finds one of the raptors standing over him. It cocks its head curiously like a bird, and then sinks its teeth into Littlefoot's face. Littlefoot screams and puts it in the mouth, which only agitates it to attack more viciously. Ducky is being thrashed like a ragdoll, and the same raptor that attacked Littlefoot is also assaulting Victor. When Sarah manages to open her eyes as she is struggling for her life, she sees a film of red. She realizes that a thin layer of her own blood is coating her vision, and she feels ready to pass out. <sighs> Daddy, help us! <laughs> A stark whistle is sounded, or something that sounds very much like one. The Dakota Raptors immediately stop attacking the four friends. Ducky is hanging limply in one of their mouths. With the sound of another low-pitched whistle, the Dakota Raptor holding Ducky drops her. Victor, using his front legs, drags himself over to Ducky. Her whole body looks bloody and broken. Ducky. 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 
The human man walks from the direction of the main trail into the middle of the Dakota Raptors. Victor is still trying to shake Ducky awake. The man looks at each of them, and as he does, they all avert their gaze. To Sarah's surprise, the man is Heath. He lights his cigar, seemingly the least bit concerned of their injuries or state of mind. He takes a drag and then exhales and says, Oh, I told y'all not to try and run away, didn't I? 